Hi Twitch and welcome back. Um, we are here with the private CA team. This is Todd. Todd, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Abby. Great to be here. Um, so we have another one of our, our post announcement segments this morning. So we launched the, the private CA this morning and as part of Werner's keynote. Um, and now we're back discussing it live on Twitch. Um, so if you're just joining us or if you weren't in the keynote, uh, can you give us a little bit of a recap on, on what you launched this morning? Yeah, sure. Today we launched uh, ACM Private Certificate Authority, and this is a new feature for AWS Certificate Manager, a product we launched about two years ago. So today, ACM uh, manages public certificates, and it makes it easy to deploy a public certificate to your site so that when browsers connect to it, they see a lock icon and they can establish a secure connection to a site on the internet. Uh, what we announced today, though, is a way for ACM to manage uh, private certificates and to generate private certificates. And the reason this is tricky is because uh, enterprises want to identify resources on private networks within their organization. Uh, things like private servers, IoT devices, EC2 instances, and uh, private certificate authorities are, are notoriously difficult to operate and run and manage. So ACM, private CA, is a way for enterprises and organizations to, to use a service rather than operating their own certificate authority. Um, so if, you, if you've been coming from more of a software engineering background rather than like an infrastructure or IT or, or DevOps background, um, the, the certificate is how you know that you can trust that your connection is secure to something. So I end up with like a, a root certificate which would come from some like the actual certificate authority and then I can follow the chain of authority back. So that says that if I connect to aws.amazon.com that I can trust that my connection is secure the whole way through. So a certificate authority is who issues that certificate. That's right. Okay. That's right. Um, just making sure that we do, we do a little bit of a recap if you're not someone that's, that's handled uh, certificates before in the past. Yeah, it's all about establishing that secure connection, whether it's from a browser to an internet site or between devices on, a, on an enterprise network. Anytime you have two devices or two servers that want to connect to each other securely or a, a user that wants to connect to a site securely, uh, certificates really help that process by establishing uh, the identity of the server or the device, as well as helping to establish that secure encrypted connection. So for a public certificate, that's what you'd see if I, if I like click the little green lock button in Chrome, I can see the certificate so that yes, your connection to the site is secure and then here's the chain for the certificate so that I know where the certificate came from. But private certificates, which is what we're talking about right now, are for private resources. So your internal servers, your internal resources, things that aren't exposed to the public internet. That's right, anything on a private network uh, can be uh, given an identity and a certificate that identifies that resource on a private network. Um, can you tell me a little bit about how the ACM private CA uh, will help customers? Yeah, sure, so like I said, historically it's been, it's been difficult for organizations to operate their own certificate authorities. It takes uh, a lot of security expertise, there are uh, uh, hardware security modules that protect the private keys of the CA. Those are notoriously difficult to operate and manage. And uh, all together, all these aspects uh, combined make it difficult to operate a private certificate authority. Uh, and furthermore, the, the other benefit to customers is that being integrated with AWS and the APIs that AWS provides, CloudTrail logging, uh, IAM integration for policies. These all give developers a way to obtain private certificates using a APIs. And so, you know, it goes back to what's hard about certificates is really that, you know, they expire. If you rely on manual processes, uh, lots of things can go wrong. So by making the certificate authority API driven uh, and, and automating the processes around certificate management, we've made it a lot simpler for customers to, to manage certificates. If you have not someone who has managed certificates before in the past, it's actually really terrible. <laughs> it's like, it's the day that you're like, oh God, 
it's been 364 days. <laughs> My certificate expired, and then I'm like, then you're sitting there on Stack Overflow trying to look up all the correct open SSL commands, and life is way too short for this. Um, so that's why we have certificate managers. So um, if it's not something that you've worked with directly hands-on before, it's a huge deal to be able to have something like a certificate manager that kind of takes that really frustrating process out of your hands and let someone else deal with it. So I think it's actually one of the, it's like not the one that you always think of when you're like, this is what I need to manage service for until you are the person that's responsible for all of your domain names and your certificates and you're like, wow, yeah. <laughs> I wish that I had had this 15 years ago. So that's right. um, it's really cool that we can now apply that to private resources too so that my internal resources can have the same level of security as my public facing resources. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, and, and ACM manages the renewal of certificates whether they're public or private in one place. Uh, you can deploy certificates automatically to other AWS services, just like you can with ACM today. So if you have a CloudFront distribution, uh, an Elastic Load Balancer, or an API Gateway, uh, ACM can deploy that certificate for you and renew that certificate when it's due, uh, either public or private. And for private certificates, ACM <laughs> now you can export the certificate and use it anywhere, on EC2 instances, on servers, uh, and all through APIs. So this idea of managing certificates and automating it extends now to EC2 instances, uh, IoT devices, containers. Um, so I know you mentioned, you, you've given us a couple kind of example use cases now. Are there some other common scenarios where you see people really wanting to, to use private CA? It really spans a range of, of use cases. We have, uh, device manufacturers for IOT devices that want to connect their factory up to a private CA and issue device certificates as these devices are rolling off the line. We have internal Amazon customers that are looking to securely identify resources within AWS and within Amazon. Uh, anywhere there's a private network that two devices need to talk to each other and know for sure who they're talking to and to talk securely uh, IoT is a great point here. Yes. That it's like it's it's like not something that you think about too, right? That like all of all of those devices that you have, all of your all of your smart devices, all of your IoT devices, they also need to be able to speak securely. So that's right. And you have a, a, a sensor, a fire alarm sensor, or any number of sensors that want to talk to an application and provide data. Well, you want to make sure that data is right. reliable. You want to know that that's actually a sensor in your network before you accept data from it. Otherwise, you, you know, there's potential corruption and uh, lots of things can go wrong otherwise. Yeah, um, so it's time for my, for my favorite question, which is how can customers get started today? And I think actually that leads us really nicely into my favorite segment, which is demo time. Yeah, so I'm going to walk you through uh, obtaining a private certificate. Uh, so on my screen now I have a, a demonstration. I'll start with the certificate manager in the ACM, in the AWS, console. To the and person in Twitch, by the way, that said CSR request, give me the chills. I feel ya, I feel ya. <laughs> That's right, ACM takes <laughs> care of that. You don't have to look at a CSR ever again. So at this point, we're going through and showing <laughs> a certificate manager console. We have both private CA management and certificate management in the same console. I'm going to request a private certificate now. Uh, I've already established that I have a private CA in, in my account. So I can select that private CA from a drop-down list. Uh, at this point, I then just click Next. Now I identify my, my server or my device with a, a domain name, a DNS name. I'm going to use server internal just to emphasize the fact that this is an internal name. It doesn't have to be a public DNS name. And then I click Confirm and Request. At this point, ACM is going to the private CA. Uh, taking care of all the steps of generating that CSR and uh, requesting the certificate and issuing it. Uh, within a few seconds here, we see the certificate is now issued. And I can also, at this point, select the certificate and export it. So in this case, uh, I'm going to enter a passphrase and it's going to give me back the encrypted private key, the, the certificate, and the chain, and I can take this and export it to a file and deploy it to an EC2 instance or anywhere I need it. Now, of course, this is the, this is the uh, console interface, it's a graphical user interface, but 
ACM is really designed for automation. So everything I, that I just did in the console, you can do with APIs, and you can write your own logic to automate this process to get certificates and deploy them wherever you need them. So I can create it, I can use it inside AWS, I can export it to somewhere else, but beyond kind of just working with the console, I could automate all of this. So I could do this through API calls instead. And I've seen a couple of, of, of good questions um, in Twitch that the mods have been answering. Uh, one was around validation emails. Uh, you'll note that in that demo, uh, there was no yes. validation email. Um, the, someone asked, um, does this support wildcards? Yes. When I, when I type that domain name, it can be a wildcard name, it can be multiple domain names. I didn't show it, but I could add additional names, but wildcards are definitely an option as well. Um, some nice feedback for you. Um, wow, PCA is exactly another piece of the puzzle I was needing. Fantastic. Oh, that's great feedback, thank you. Uh, we like positive feedback as much as we like feature requests, so keep both of those coming. Um, so I think that the next question for me is, what do you see happening next? So we've had, we have we have a public CA, we have private CA. What do you what do you kind of what do you see customers asking for? What do you see kind of the next direction that you that you go for this? Yeah, there's there's more we can do around the the automation. Uh, we want to keep pushing in that direction. As of now, you know, when you export that certificate, you kind of have to have the client logic to right. manage and deploy that certificate. We want to push out for that. I look at it as kind of a last mile problem. You know, we've solved the kind of central creation of certificates and renewal of certs and managing of them, <laughs> but that last mile with all the different applications that you can deploy a certificate to, they're all different. Uh, we want to improve that process of making it possible and easy to deploy certs for all those applications. Uh, I have a follow-up question here from Twitch. Uh, does it support client certs? Yes, definitely. Uh, the answer is yes. It's the best kind of answer, just yes. Um, awesome. Uh, and then upcoming, you think, like the last mile type problem. So what happens when the certificate leaves the certificate manager? So when you export that certificate and you use it on your own side to consume it, uh, how can we help you with that part as well? That's right. Um, which, uh, this was a launch from this morning, uh, which regions is Private CA in? Private CA is available in uh, nine regions today. It's in uh, Northern Virginia, Ohio, Oregon, Montreal, Singapore, Tokyo, Ireland, Ireland, Frankfurt, and Frankfurt. Thank you. I helped. I had a list though in front of me, so I cheated. <laughs> <laughs> nice work. It was first. It was a pop quiz, and then, <laughs> uh, and then I helped out a little bit. Um, I think actually that we've already t we've already covered the the price. I've seen some questions in Twitch on pricing, but I believe they have already been covered by the by the moderators, and they sent you a link. Um, so you got all the pricing details there. Um, I don't see anything else from Twitch, um, so I think we're good. Oh, uh, is there support for extended validation certificates? So that's a good question. Extended validation really apply to public certificates, and ACM uh, does support issuing public certificates, but only domain validation. We don't support extended validation for public search today. Gotcha. Um, just a clarification for Twitch, um, that's for public certificates, uh, and this is the, we're talking about the private CA here, so uh, extended validation doesn't really apply. Right, you don't, as I showed in the demo, you don't need any validation. If you control the certificate authority, you decide through policies, your own policies that you control, what certificates you want to issue. You're in charge of your own certificates now. Um, this has been great. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and there's links in the chat if you want to learn more about the, the private CA. Um, and we'll be back in just a couple of minutes.